Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to talk about composition of functions. So in this video, we're going to talk about composite functions or composition of functions. We're going to talk about how to find the domain of a composition of functions, and then also how to write functions as compositions. So we've talked about combinations of functions in the previous video with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, but it turns out that there's another operation with functions to form a new function that we have not talked about yet. So let's talk about composition of functions. To help understand this new operation, we're going to look at supporting our local computer store and it's having a cell. So the models that we're about to use is going to model the sale cost, which is either a $300 less than their regular price. So that's one optional sale. Or another sale would be 85% of the regular price is what you pay. In other words, a 15% off. So the two different sales that the computer store offers are $300 off or 15% off, one or the other. We're going to let X represent the original price of the computer. And we're going to apply two different discounts. And this is going to give us two different functions. So f of x is taking the original price and subtracting $300. So that's the $300 less than the original price. And then the other function is you're paying 85% of the original price, so 0.85 times x. So we walk into the store and we talk to the salesperson and we finally convince them to give us an offer that we cannot refuse. The deal that they're going to give us is that after we pay 85%, of the regular price, so a 15% off first, then the salesperson has also agreed to take off an additional $300. So in that order, we're going to take 15% off first, then we're going to take off $300. So you can think of this as it's going to form a new function that's going to give us both discounts in a certain order. So think of it as your output from the first discount is 0.85 times x. So that is 15% off. That was the first discount applied. We're going to substitute into the function that gave us the $300 off, which was f of x. So we have two different functions. We have f of x is equal to x minus 300. This was the second discount applied. And then we also have g of x, which was 0.85 times x, and this was the first discount. All right, so let's form a composition. We're going to apply both discounts in a certain order, where g of x is the input into the function f of x, so like this. So f, and then your input is not x anymore, the input is g of x. So that means take the g of x and replace it with 0.85 times x, so f times 0.85x. And so now the input is 0.85x. So this is about using function notation now. So the function f was input subtract 300. So 0.85x subtract 300. And now that's a new function. The function's name is f of g of x. And that's the function's output, 0.85x minus 300. So keep in mind that this new function applies the discount g of x. First, and the discount f of x second. So the order is important here. So notice that we had g was inside the function f. That's what we plugged in. We plugged in g into f. So g of x is sometimes called the inside function, and f is called the outside function. The inside function is applied first to x. Then the outside function is applied second. And so there's a name for this new function, and it's called composite function. So the operation is called composition, and you have to have two functions to do composition. 
and the new function is called a composite function and it's denoted with a special notation it's F and then a little circle so it means composition and then G so it's applied backwards than what is read from left to right so let's talk about this problem we walk into the computer store and we are trying to buy a laptop that was originally priced fourteen hundred dollars but we are negotiating those two different discounts with this computer store so let's see what would happen with the original price how much would we pay at the end using both discounts well we have a, a couple different ways to do this now we have a composite function that we just found it was f parentheses g of x it was 0.85x then subtract 300 and it was found by substituting in the input g of x into f of x which was the outside function so let's try this with our new function if x is the original price of the computer $1400 then we're going to find out if it's what will be the price at the end. So we plug in 1400 in for the X. So you'll have F parentheses G parentheses 1400. That would be 0.85 times 1400 and then subtract 300. And this turns out to be $809. After paying 85% of the original price and then taking $300 off we should get the exact same answer if we do this in two different steps let's say we take X to be 1400 but we plug it into the inside function first, or in other words, the first discount. So let's see what we get if we do this in two different steps. So G of 1400 would be, well, the first discount was paying 85%. So 0.85 times X, which is 1400. Well, if you pay 85% of 1400, you'll have 1,190. So that would be what you pay after having a 15% off. Well now, how do you figure out the final price? How can you find out 890? Well, you take this answer after the first discount and you plug it into the outside function, which was F. And F said, take the price X, which is 1190 now, and now subtract $300 off as the second discount and you come up with $890. And so these two answers are the same. Notice that if you use two different functions, you have to do it in two different steps. But if you have a composite function, you can do this in directly in one step. Just plug it right into the, to the composite function. Okay, so let's talk about the definition of composition of functions next. The composition of a function f with g in that order is denoted f, little circle g, so f composed with g. And that's the function's name, and it's defined as this operation. So f composed with g of x is saying you take the function g of x and that's now your input when you plug it into the outside function f of x. So again, the order matters. g of x is the inside function, f of x is the outside function. You're always plugging the inside function into the outside function. So once we have the new function, now you can talk about finding the domain. Domain is a very complicated thing with composite functions, so we're going to talk about this in a little bit more in detail. If you want to find out the domain of a composite function, f composed with g, it is the set of all x values that are real numbers, such that there's two steps. One, the x value must be in the domain of the inside function. So keep in mind, g of x is the inside function, x must be in the domain of the inside function first. If that's true, then number two, g of x is now being treated like it's an input value for the outside function. So g of x is in the domain of the outside function. So this illustration gives you an idea of what does it actually mean to find the, the domain of a composite function. 
there are two different steps with composite functions. So if you want to find out the domain, determine the domain of the composite function, you need to find out what is happening to this input value x over those two steps. So the first step, you input x into your inside function, which was g, and it will spit out g of x as your output. If it doesn't, if it does not give you a y value, then this original x is not in the domain of the composite function. Now the second step, let's say you actually do get a y value for your function g of x, the inside function. Now you take this y value and you treat it like it's an input into your outside function. So you input g of x into your outside function, which is f, and now you get a new output, which is a new y value. So this is the y value for the composite function, f of g of x. If you do not get a y value here, then this original g of x was not in the domain of f, which means that this original x is not in the domain of the composite function. You need to find which x values give you a y value g of x, and those g of x's will give you an, a y value of f of g of x. If you don't get both steps, then that original x is not in the domain of the composite function. So let's talk about this example in terms of an error diagram. So this will give you an idea of what does it mean for domain, and how does composite functions work. So this is the original domain of g of x, which was the first discount. You'll have the domain of f, which is the domain of the outside function, and you'll have the range of the inside function, which was g of x. And then finally, you're going to have an output or range of f of x. Okay, let's talk about the computer problem. You walk into the store and you are trying to purchase an originally priced $1,400 laptop. Well, after the first discount, which was G of X, you get $1,190. That's how much you would be paying after the 15% off. And this function is G of X. Now, for the second discount, you don't use $1,400 anymore. Now the price of the laptop is already one discount later is $1,190. The second discount was $300 off, and now you finally pay $890. And this was the function f of x. The advantage of having composite functions is that if you know a composite function, you can go directly from the original x value, $1,400, to the $890, which was f composed with g of x. Okay, so let's look at example three. We're going to get an idea of how you actually perform composition and why does the order matter. So number one, we're going to find out what is the composite function f composed with g of x, which by the definition is f of g of x. So notice that when I wrote this, I was saying of. Wherever you see a parenthesis, it's read as of. So f of g of x. That's the composite function. So how do you actually find it? You substitute the inside function, which is g of x, into the outside function f of x. Okay, and of course you simplify after that. So let's do that. So let's say f of g of x, that is f of, replace g of x with the function 2x minus 7. This means you take the whole function 2x minus 7 and you substitute it into the outside function as an input value. So the function f was negative 4x plus 9, that's negative 4, times your input, which is 2x minus 7, and then you add 9. Okay, so now we have to simplify by distributing and collecting like terms. So you'll have negative 8x plus 28 plus 9, and that's negative 8x plus 37. And so that is the new function, f of g of x. Okay, let's see what happens if you reverse the order of composition this time. So in other words, what would happen if you have g on the outside and f on the inside this time? So g 
of f of x. So do you get a different answer? Well, you should think that you do because you take the inside function, which is different this time, f of x, and you plug it into the outside function, g of x. So in other words, substitute the inside function, f of x, into the outside function, g of x. All right, see what we get this time. So you'll have g of f of x. This time replace f of x, which is negative 4x plus 9. So g of negative 4x plus 9. And now wherever you see an input value for the function g, it becomes negative 4x plus 9 in parentheses. So 2 times x is negative 4x plus 9. And then you subtract 7. So again, make sure you distribute the 2 through both terms. Inside the parentheses, you'll have negative 8x plus 18, and then subtract 7, which is negative 8x plus 11. So notice that. For the example, reversing the order of the inside and outside function, do not give you the same answer. Okay, and which means that f of g of x, which was negative 8x plus 37, is not equal to negative 8x plus 11, which was g of f of x. So these two functions are not equal to each other. All right, so keep in mind that if you want to find composition, it's really the operation of substitution. You substitute in the inside function to the outside function to find it. So notice that we didn't talk about domain yet, so now let's talk about domain. How do you find out the domain of a composite function? Keep in mind that this is a pretty complicated process, so we're going to do this in two steps. This is going back to the arrow diagram. You need to determine the domain of the inside function if the function is f composed with g as your composite function. So determine the domain of the inside function. Any x value that's not in the domain of g of x must be excluded from the domain of the composite function. You must have your y value defined. Step two, determine the domain of the outside function. Any x value where the y value is not in the domain of f of x must also be excluded. So this second one is saying if you do not have both arrows, those original x's have to be excluded from the domain of the composite function. You need to find an x value that will go to a g of x and will also go to an f of g of x. Otherwise, you have to exclude those two. Okay, example four, we're going to get more practice finding out the composite functions and also this time find out the domains. So f of x is 4x plus 1, and g of x is 2x squared plus 3. So number 1, we're going to find what is f composed with g, which is f of g of x. So which one's the inside function? It looks like g of x. So that means substitute the inside function, g of x, into the outside function f of x to form composition. So let's do that. We'll have f of g of x is the new function. You take the inside function, which is 2x squared plus 3, and now you make that the input for the function f, which is the outside function. So the outside function is 4 times x. Well, x is the input. So 2x squared plus 3. And then you add 1. So now it's simplified, just like before. Distribute the 4 to both terms inside the parentheses. So you'll have 8x squared plus 12 plus 1, or 8x squared plus 13. 
And so that's the composite function. So now let's find out the domain of the composite function. So keep in mind that there are two steps. So step one is to find out the domain of the inside function. So the domain of the inside function, well, notice if you want to find out the domain, there are two operations to, to be concerned about. You are not divided by zero because there's no x's in the denominator and there are no square roots in the problem where you'll be taking the square root of a negative number. So the domain is a set of all real numbers. So negative infinity to infinity. So now find out the domain of the outside function, which is f. So again, notice that f of x, there are no division by x, so no division by zero possible, and there are no even roots. So it's also all real numbers. So these two combined mean there are no x values to exclude at all from either step. So the domain of the composite function is also all real numbers. So the domain of f composed with g of x is negative infinity to infinity. All right, number two. Let's talk about the other composition, other composite function. So we'll have g composed with f of x. Well, that is defined to be g of f of x in that order. So this means this time take the substitute, the inside function, which is f of x. Into the outside function g of x. And we've already talked about this, that you should expect a different answer when you do this composite function in reverse order. So let's find g of f of x. So that means take the inside function, f of x, 4x plus 1. And now take all the x's in the function g and replace them with 4x plus 1. So that means 2 times x, well that's 4x plus 1. The x was squared in the function g, so now square it, and then add 3. So now we're going to do a little bit of simplifying, because we have 4x plus 1 times itself, because of the square. So 2 times 4x plus 1 times 4x plus 1, and then add 3. So make sure you do the exponent first before you multiply the 2. So FOIL, 4x times 4x, 4x times 1, 1 times 4x, and then 1 times 1. Let's see what we get when we FOIL first. Then we'll worry about the 2 second. So 2 times 16x squared plus 4x plus 4x gives you 8x plus 1. And then the plus 3 was on the outside of the parentheses. And now distribute the 2 through the parentheses to remove any grouping symbols. So you have 32x squared plus 16x plus 2 plus 3. And then, again, add like terms to finish up the problem. So you have 32x squared plus 16x plus 5. That's the composite function, g composed with f. So now let's find out the domain and range again. So domain of the inside function, so which was f of x. Well, we just did this in the previous problem. The domain of f of x was all real numbers. Now find out the domain of the outside function, which was g of x. And we did that in the previous problem too, which was all real numbers. So in other words, there are no x values to exclude from either function. So the domain of the composite function is also all real numbers, which is g composed with f, negative infinity to infinity. And then one final note again. Notice that for the previous example, Reversing the inside and outside functions. We'll give you a different answer. So do not give the same answer. f composed with g with x was 8x squared plus 13. And that's not the same as what we got when we did g of f of x. 
which was 32x squared plus 16x plus 5. So keep in mind, if you ever reverse the order of the functions for the inside and outside functions, you will not get the same answer. This problem is extremely different. The last problem we talked about, it was the first term was the same, but this is not even close to being the same. They both have an x squared, but that's about it that they have in common. Okay, so let's talk about example five now. We're going to do the same kind of problem. We're going to find out what the composite functions are and also find out the domains. So number one, let's find, again, f composed with g of x. So f of g of x. So that means take the inside function g of x and plug it into the outside function. So that would be f of x minus 3 when you plug in the g of x. And now that means you take the x and replace it with x minus 3 in the outside function. So you'll find out it's square root of x minus 3. That's the composite function. So now notice that this function has a square root. So we will have issues with the domain this time. So again, let's find out the domain of the composite function. It takes two different steps. So find out the domain of the inside function. The domain of the inside function is all real numbers because you're not divided by zero and you're not taking the square root of a negative number. And then the domain of the outside function, which was f of x. Well, this one does have an issue because it has a square root. So what's inside the square root is x. It must be positive or equal to zero. So zero to infinity with a square bracket on zero because you do want to include zero. Well, if you take these two and combine them, it means I can plug in any x value that I want for the g of x, but I can only plug in the x values that give me a y value that is zero or positive. Well, that means I need to look at the new function and see I can only plug in what makes x minus 3 greater, greater than or equal to 0. So the domain of the composite function, f composed with g of x, it looks like x minus 3 must be greater than or equal to 0. So that would be 3 with a bracket to infinity. And that's because x must be greater than or equal to 3. So now number 2. Let's see what happens if you reverse the order. So g composed with f of x. So g is the outside this time, and f is the inside function. So this time you're going to take the square root function and plug it into the function g. So this means you'll have square root of x for that x, and then subtract 3 outside the square root this time. All right, so again, let's find out the domain. Domain, we just found out in the previous problem. The domain of the inside function is f of x. That was 0 to infinity. It was only the x values that were positive, or 0. And the domain of the outside function, which was g of x, is the set of all real numbers. Let's see what happens if you combine these two domains together. Well, the first step said I can only plug in positive x values, or equal to 0. The second function said once you do that, you're allowed to plug in anything that you want. So you just have to exclude any negative number. So take these two, combine them, and you have the domain of the composite function, g composed with f of x. It would be 0 to infinity, or any x value that's greater than or equal to 0. And again, notice that both composite functions were not the same. So notice that in the example, Reversing the inside and outside functions. Do not give you the same answer. Or the domains. The domains were different as well this time. So if you reverse the order of the inside and outside functions, don't expect the same function and don't expect the same domains. If they turn out to be the same domain, that's just a coincidence. Okay, so let's finish up this section by talking about how do you actually take a composite function and write the original functions. So up to this point, we've been given the two functions and we've been finding a new function. 
So now we're going to reverse this process. So in other words, we're going to take a function and decompose it instead of compose. What that means is that you need to find the original two functions that will express the composite function. So let's talk about example six. Given this composite function, h of x, now this is a composite function already. You have x plus one in parentheses, all squared, plus two times x plus one in parentheses, and then subtract three. We are being asked to find what are the two functions f of x and g of x, so that when you compose these two functions together, you get h of x. Okay, now while we do these problems, keep in mind that answers are not unique. Okay, in other words, there are more than one correct answer. All right, so the idea is that we want to find what is f of x and what is g of x so that when you do composition, you get h of x. Well, h of x in this problem will be f is on the outside and g is on the inside. Okay, that has to be told to you to figure out which one's the inside and which one's the outside. So the g of x is the inside function, f of x is the outside function for this problem. So f of x and g of x. So let's find out what the inside function would be first. That's much easier to do. What does it look like you're plugging in to the function? What does it look like you're substituting in in parentheses? Well, for this composite function, it looks like we're plugging in an x plus one because that looks like it's x plus one inside the parentheses. So x plus one will be the inside function g of x. And now what does it look like x plus one is being plugged in to? Because that's the outside function. Well, I'm plugging in something that's being squared. Well, I'm plugging in to an x. So x squared plus two times, I'm plugging in for something again. So x and then subtract three. And that's your outside function. There are several different answers that could be possible for this problem. But keep in mind, you want to make sure that h of x gives you f composed with g of x or f of g of x. So that's a good way to check your answer. If you take the inside function, which is x plus one, and you plug it into the outside function, x squared plus two x minus three, you should get the original function that you're given, the composite function. All right, and the last example, example seven, we're going to do the exact same thing. Given the composite function is h of x equals square root x squared plus five this time, find out what f of x and g of x are so that you get h of x is the composite function. And again, keep in mind that answers are not unique. So in other words, there are more than one possible answer. All right, so again, let's treat h of x as it's f composed with g of x, so that f is on the outside and g of x is the inside function. So f of x and g of x. All right, so just like the last problem, let's talk about the inside function. What does it look like you're plugging in to get h of x? Well, you could treat the inside function as inside the square root. x squared plus five, that's one possible inside function. If this is your inside function, what is the outside function? It looks like I'm plugging into a square root of an input value. So square root of x, and that's your outside function. So square root of x is the outside function and x squared plus five is the inside function. That way you get 
h of x is equal to f composed with g of x, which is f of g of x. That's a good way to check your answer as well. Make sure you get the composition. We'll give you h of x. So this finishes up our discussion on composite functions and finding the domain and also decomposition. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about inverse functions.